I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Romulus Board of Education scheduled for Monday, November 26, 2007 to order. Uh, do we have roll call, please, Mr. Kuderick? Ms. Kraut and Ms. Roscoe are absent excused. Ms. Freyer? Present. Ms. Buckley? Here. Ms. Lanassi? Present. Mr. McKevich? Here. Mr. Kuderick, present. Uh, would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, just before we proceed with uh, the rest of the agenda, uh, I would just like to make a comment that uh, our superintendent, who I know really wanted to be here because he's talked about this in the past, uh, unfortunately on Thursday evening his mother in California passed away and uh, he is in California for the uh, funeral. So uh, in place of him, uh, it's going to be myself, Mr. Clark, and whoever else can try and fill in. But uh, I just thought I'd let everyone know that's the reason he is absent. Uh, next item would be approval of agenda. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion we approve the agenda. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Kuderick, support by Mrs. Freyer to approve the agenda as presented. Are there any questions or concerns from any board members? Seeing none, we will have a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item would be approval of minutes from the previous meeting. You want two motions? Can yes, we'll do two motions, one for the study session, one for the meeting. Okay, I make a motion that we approve the minutes of our study session of November 12th. Support. Uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Buckley, support by Mrs. Freyer, to approve the minutes of the study session held on... Uh, November 12th, 2007. Any questions from the board members? Seeing none, we will have a vote. All those in favor of accepting the minutes from the study session, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, I'll make the motion that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of November 12th. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Lanassi. Support by Mrs. Buckley to approve the regular meeting minutes of November 12, 2007 as presented. Any board members with concerns, questions, or corrections? Seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor of passing the minutes, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next item, uh, we'll get it into the report of the superintendent. And before we get into the rest of the agenda, Mr. Clark will have a few comments. Thank you, Mr. McCavich. Uh, on behalf of the superintendent Weiss, so we are thrilled to announce uh, that the Board of Education has received a gift of property from Mr. Charles Kalansky. This property consists of 6.132 acres of land located in the north part of the Legacy Park subdivision, which is west of Cogswell Road and north of Tyler Road in Section 7 of the City of Romulus and 3.443 acres from Elro Corporation. This property is being deeded to Romulus Community Schools to be used as the Joseph and Charlotte Kalansky Nature Preserve. A motion is needed at this time by the board to accept this gift from Mr. Kalansky. Okay. Mr. President, I make a motion that we, would you like me to read the whole motion as it's written? Can yes, that's okay. fine. I would make, I'd like to make a motion that we accept a gift of property from Mr. Charles Kalinske of 6.132 acres of land located in the north part of the Legacy Park subdivision, west of Cogswell Road and north of Tyler Road in section 7 of the City of Romulus and 3.443 acres from Elro El Corporation. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Buckley, support by Mrs. Freyer, to accept the donation of property. Uh, before we vote, is there any board members with questions or concerns? 
seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor of accepting the donation of property, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion passes, and we've now, uh, next item would be the um, resolution. We will need a motion and support. I'll make the motion to uh, move that the Board of Education adopt a resolution for Charles Kalansky and family in recognition of their generous donation of property to the Romulus Community Schools. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Minkevich, support by Mr. Kuderick to uh, have a resolution adopted for the Kalansky family. Uh, any board members with questions or concerns? Mr. President, yes. I've got a question. Actually, a comment. Really appreciate this, and I understand uh, what the purpose that you folks want to do with this property, and like to see the school district w do with the property, which is great because a lot of students and young people in the community need to know about different things with the environment. It gives them a great chance for the students can learn about different things about nature. Any other comments? All right, uh, all those in favor of the adopting of the resolution say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And now I have the privilege of reading the resolution. And could we have some of the Kalansky family or all of them come up and uh, read the <laughs> Romulus Community School District Board of Education Resolution. Whereas the Kalansky family has been longtime property owners since 1930 in the township and now city of Romulus, and whereas Charles Kalansky is a graduate from Romulus High School in the year 1972, where he played in the high school band and played football, <coughs> displaying the number 72 on his football jersey. And whereas Joseph Kalansky's father, or I'm sorry, Joseph Kalansky's father of Charles Kalansky was always giving of his time in care of the old East Tyler School, donating four trees on Arbor Day to Corey Elementary School in 1961, where his son Charles was attending. And whereas Charles Kalansky, in keeping with family tradition, is desirous to donate to Ronis Community Schools a parcel of land approximately 9.373 acres in size in honor of his parents, Joseph and Charlotte Klansky. And whereas the property is located in the north part of the Legacy Park subdivision, west of Cogswell Road and north of Tyler Road in section se seven of the city of Romulus. And whereas this property is very unique, containing a stand of old growth hardwood trees, open water pond, wetlands with wetland vegetation, and a flowing stream, all elements that make it an ideal area for conservation and the study of nature and environmental issues. And whereas Charles Kalansky is desirous of deeding the aforementioned property to Romulus Community Schools for the purpose of establishing a proposed Joseph and Charlotte Kalansky Nature Preserve in order to ensure that the Kalansky family's understanding and appreciation of nature is shared with the children of Romulus Community Schools and that now, therefore, be it resolved that the Romulus Board of Education, speaking on behalf of all the people of this community, does hereby extend appreciation to the Kalansky family for the generosity as community leaders and community benefactors in deeding property located in the north part of the Legacy Park subdivision, west of Cogswell Road and north of Tyler Road in Section 7 of the City of Romulus, to Romulus Community Schools for the purpose of completing a proposed Joseph and Charlotte Klansky Nature Preserve, given this 26th day of November 2007, signed by myself as President of the Board of Education and by Mr. Thomas Kuderick as Secretary of the Board of Education.
going to get all the ones at the same time? What? Oh, you could if you want. Sure. See, the, the inside joke on this is, at least from my perspective, is my dad, you know, the earlier pictures there from Cory Elementary, mm -hmm. my dad donated the four trees for uh, in Arbor Day when I was just a little guy, so now I'm worn up on him. I'm my cousin Walter Kalansky. His dad was Julius, just passed away earlier this month. Sorry yeah. to hear that. His wife, uh, Joyce. And it's my dad's Joyce. youngest sister, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Her, her mm -hmm. uh, she's one of the little ones up in the front there. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is. She's a very nice job. I, I wish I had graduated in 72 because uh, I'd be a little younger than I am today. <laughs> You'd still be working, Ken. Well, Mr. McCabbage, we graduated. We were at the same time. So. We really Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. You really should have had the mic when you said that, because that was <laughs> wonderful. Um, <laughs> you should have. I never even thought about that. Me neither. Cheryl, do you want to do this? How do you let me do it? Yeah. Okay. Can, we'll get to it now. Okay. All right, the next item on the agenda uh, is a resolution concerning Project STAR, uh, which is something that's going on at the high school. And uh, first off, we need a motion and support. Mr. President, I make a motion that we uh, accept the... That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. I guess I need to move away yeah. this. Okay, I make a motion that the Board of Education does hereby support Project STAR, which is Seniors Teaching Avid Reading and proclaims December 4th, 2007 as Avid Reading Day for all Ramos Community School students to read at 10 a.m. throughout the district. Support. And we have uh, Mrs. Lenasi. I have a motion by Mrs. Buckley, support by Mrs. Lanasi to uh, pass a resolution proclaiming December 4th, 2007 as Avid Reading Day. Any questions from board members? All right, seeing none, we'll have a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passes, and now... The resolution will be read by Mrs. Buckley. Okay. We have Ms. Garrett here. I don't know if you... Oh. Ms. Garrett, Ms. Garrett? You come forward and accept this, please, or whoever is with you, please come forward. Hi, come on up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like. <laughs> Okay, Ramos Community School District Board of Education Resolution. Whereas Project STAR, Students Teaching Avid Reading, is a group of four seniors organizing an early literacy program to introduce children to the joy of reading and to motivate them to learn them to re learn to read more. And whereas Project STAR has been inspired by a contest sponsored by Channel One, a cable newscast program for high school students where they could win the Take Action One Cup Trophy, a check for $5,000 in funding for Ramos High School, an array of new camera equipment, and whereas Project STAR is desirous of implementing a program that will help others in the Ramos community and that exhibits creativity, dedication, and make an impact on their efforts, and whereas Project STAR must submit a 500-word essay and a three-minute video of their project, and whereas Project STAR on December 4, 2007, 
2007, we'll be supplying the preschool children at the Head Start Center with new books to read and take home and share with their families. And whereas the Romans Board of Education is, de is desirous of proclaiming December 4, 2007, as Avid Reading Day for all Romans Community School students, where all students will read at 10 a.m. throughout the district. Now, therefore, be res resolved that the Romans Board of Education does hereby support Project STAR, te Seniors Teaching Avid Reading, and proclaims December 4, 2007, as Avid Reading Day for all Romans Community School students to read at 10 a.m. throughout the district. And that is from Mr. Ken Mankiewicz, the President of the Romans Board of Education, and Mr. Tom Kuderick, the Secretary of the Romans Board of Education. Ms. Garrett, can we get can we get their names, please? Yes, would you please? I would love that. Congratulations. This is nice. And this is Ms. Would you give that to Ms. Garrett, please? Oh, you're very welcome, sweetheart. Here you go. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening. You gotta go down in the box. <laughs> uh, my name is Rachel Arthur, and I am one of the four seniors that are part of this group called Project Star. And this is Deanna White. You gotta go down, stand in that box, so you can get on camera. Right <laughs> Careful, don't trip. Um, well, my name is Rachel Arthur, and I'm one of the four people in the group. This is Deanna White, Claire Windham, and Eric Berger. And together we created a project called Project Star, which is seniors teaching avid reading. And Eric is going <coughs> to tell us a little bit about how we came up with the idea. Hi. We came across Project Star kind of by chance. Um, the four of us share a fifth hour, and oftentimes we'll go down to help out Miss Garrett at the Media Center. And she came to us with a Channel One, I'm sure you're all familiar with Channel One, um, <coughs> they promote <coughs> student-based news. Um, they're hosting a project where any group, um, there's not very many requirements, any group who can benefit their community the most will receive $5,000 and camera equipment to whatever school they happen to be from. And so, you know, we sat down and we started thinking, well, you know, we'd like to do this. This sounds like a really good, good idea. And also being that we're all seniors, we thought, well, we could do this for our senior project as well. Um, so we received special permission from our English 12 teachers. And now our idea is that we will fundraise throughout the community um, from Ramos businesses, from students throughout the high school. And we'd be purchasing books for students, all three and four-year-olds um, enrolled in Ramos Head Start. I think there's about 175. And they'll receive books you know, to help promote I've been reading brand new books just to get them an early jump on reading and just interest in reading in general. Um, I'm Deanna White, and I guess I can speak for all of us that we are avid readers. We love to read. I personally started reading chapter books when I was in third grade, and it has influenced my life a lot. Now I am a senior, and I love to read. And there isn't much repulsion against me in reading while I'm in school. So. I love this idea. I was very much excited about it. And some fundraisers that we decided to do were we were selling gummy bears and ice cream sundaes, and we're really excited. We have $150 saved up so far, and we plan on getting more by the end of this week, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, we appreciate that you picked December 4th to be the Avid Reading Day so we can share the reading throughout the, the, the school district. And district wide for all the students to read at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think Karen wants us to break so we can get the pictures. Uh, I think we're going to take just a short break so they can get a couple pictures and uh, then we'll be back into the rest of the meeting. Thumb appeared. <laughs> All right, we uh, will go back into regular session now to complete the agenda. Uh, now that we've got all the nice things out of the way, um, next will be Mr. Clark. 
dealing with the presentation of Ramos Middle School. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Mr. McCavich. Uh, tonight, uh, we have uh, members of the board, uh, Ms. Atkins, principal of Ramos Middle School and her outstanding staff, to give us an update of the curriculum and uh, other fantastic things that are going on at Ramos Middle School. Ms. Atkins. Thank you, Mr. Clark, and it is my happy privilege to come before you. This is the second time in uh, so many years, almost three years, and uh, we have a little bit different flair that we're going to use this evening. I, first, I would, all, I would like to introduce the staff that are here. We have, to my right, uh, Ms. Shackelford, who is eighth grade counselor, Mr. Logan, who is a seventh grade counselor, of course, Ms. Henry, who is the right hand, oh gosh, <laughs> is she ever, and uh, Michael Madsen, who is our department chair for math. Next is to oh, science, I'm sorry, where did I, sorry, Lynn. <laughs> no, you're science. Um, the um, special education uh, consultant and department chair is Takia Watkins, and Mary Coffey, who is standing in for the department chair for social studies. Um, Mr. McCabe, he is a coach, so he is on the floor right now uh, with his team, with his eighth grade team. Mrs. Beta, who is the math uh, department chair, and Mr. Gary Bannis, who, is, uh, who shares the electives uh, department chair duties. So we are here to present a glance at the curriculum uh, today and uh, we thank you for your patience. We especially thank you for your time. We especially thank you for your support of the work that we're doing at Romulus Middle School. We have an extremely professional staff, well-trained staff. They know what has to be done and we are working and moving forward at the middle school. And we thank you for the opportunity to present to you this evening. I'm going to introduce the uh, counselors at this time. Thank you, Ms. Atkins. Um, <clears throat> first, I'd like to uh, mention the members of the guidance department. They are, of course, myself, Mr. Logan, Ms. Shackelford, uh, eighth grade counselor, and of course, I'm seventh grade. Um, Ms. Yutzi is our secretary, and Mr. Mayfield is a social worker. Ms. Shackelford and I uh, chose three major areas of the guidance as examples of what we do uh, to aid our students in being more successful here at the Romulus Middle School. The areas of guidance are academic development, career development, and personal social development. The first, which is academic development, one of the most important ways that we are assessing the academic development of our students is through giving the Michigan Educational Assessment. The MEEP test enables yeah. students to see how their achievements compare to all the other students in the state of Michigan. All seventh grade students were tested in English language arts and math course subjects. The eighth graders were tested in English language arts, math, and science course subjects. Uh, the next academic development help is through weekly progress reports. They're distributed to those students who need academic monitor, monitor, monitoring. Uh, these reports allow parents to see how their sons and daughters are progressing in their classes on a weekly basis. So you can call it a mini report card. Now for honor roll certificates and honor roll assembly, the certificates are given out quarterly for those students who have achieved outstanding academic uh, success for that marking period, so quarters one, two, and three. Uh, now for the honor roll assemblies, uh, those two assemblies are uh, shortly after first semester and at the end of the year. Uh, these are students who have achieved uh, throughout uh, that semester or the year a uh, three-point average or better. We have a special recognition for those students who have achieved a 4.0 for the entire year and for this semester. Oh, and staffings, I'm sorry. Uh, the staffings are arranged meetings between teachers and parents, and students are invited to that, uh, but it's on the parents' request. Uh, staffings are provided uh, to the parents as an excellent opportunity. 
um, for discussing their concerns about their sons and daughters. Teachers, parents, they both exchange in information to find ways of improving the student's academic success. No. Okay, good evening. Um, one of the things you'll notice with the next item is drop-in tutoring. There are two asterisks there, and you'll see that on the other slides. Um, that's to indicate items or activities that are new or proposed that we are um, planning on starting. And um, in regards to drop-in tutoring, this is something that is different from the tutoring that's available through the departments. But drop-in tutoring is where we will be connecting uh, with the high school students. Basically, high school students will have an opportunity to uh, provide community service by coming over to the middle school and tutoring uh, the middle school students. Uh, it will be supervised, of course, um, but that is something that we are, um, we will have uh, for this year, the school year. And as you already know, high school students can use the time that they put in over at the middle school tutoring uh, as community service and therefore an elective credit. Next, please. Um, under career development, we are, uh, we do have, we will be starting, in fact, our first career speaker will be coming over tomorrow, and basically with that, we are trying to make sure that students are exposed to uh, as many opportunities to listen to people who are in various fields. We're going to have um, a, a psychologist with us tomorrow by the name of Sam Olive. That may sound familiar to you, no. Of course, Sam is, uh, is a retired school counselor. Uh, excuse me, retired school uh, psychologist, and he was with us for umpteen years, many years. So anyway, Sam will be coming back to speak with the middle school students to share um, the wonderful world of psychology with them. And so we're excited about that, and we have some other speakers lined up. This is anticipated <coughs> to take place um, <coughs> at least once a month, and students, again, will have an opportunity to sign up to listen to a career speaker. Another important part of our career development is the educational development plan. And it's part of a, four, uh, it's a full year uh, research project where students' interests and academic achievements are matched with their career choice. Students take the career interest survey that identifies which group of careers choices they would most suita be suitable for them. Students then meet individually with the middle school counselors and the high school counselors uh, to develop their four years of high school classes based on their interests, their grades, and their career choice. The next thing is the explore assessment. And again, notice that it has two asterisks. So that's something that we're actually proposing is, is, um, is something that we would like to give at the middle school. The Explore is a part of the ACT's uh, Educational Development Planning and Assessment Program. And um, basically, it's to get students prepared to uh, take the MME, because the ACT is a part of the Michigan Merit Exam, that is um, one of the tests in the ACT um, system for getting students ready for college. Also, the Explorer has a um, career interest inventory, so there is a, a career uh, component to that exam. And so um, that's something that we are, again, proposing, and we are interested in giving it in February. So once that's approved, then we'll get going on that. Um, positive Peer Influence, PPI, is a student-led um, conflict resolution program that I facilitate, and it's during the day, during third hour. We have 13 peer mediators who have been trained. Uh, they underwent 16 hours of training, learning how to um, go through the peer mediation process. They learned how to um, use active listening. Um, demonstrate empathy, those sorts of things, and it's, it's been quite successful. We've solved many cases, or helped to resolve many cases. And um, the next thing is Mix It Up Day. 
We had a great time uh, for Mix It Up Day. That took place actually on November 14th. That was uh, a, a point where we had an opportunity to have um, students basically connect with another student that they wouldn't ordinarily sit with and it takes place during lunch. And um, those who wanted to do it prearranged were able to um, connect with someone and those who want to do it on your, their own, just walking up, introducing themselves and sitting with someone new, um, they were able to do that on their own. But it was a tremendous su success and um, if we've been getting uh, a lot of positive feedback from students and staff. Now the high school orientation is a day when all eighth grade students visit the high school and follow a mock schedule of a six hour day. As a personal development, eighth grade students get a chance to lower their anxiety levels by touring the building and seeing the upper classmates. Socially, they get a chance to meet their future teachers and ask them questions about their high school classes. Project Rock and Rock stands for Realizing Our Choices is um, a program that is through St. John's Health Systems and it's, a, um, it's a, a grant program that they have going and basically it is a um, abstinence education program this w that, re that teaches refusal skills, not only refusal skills in regards to sex but um, refusal skills in regards to drugs and any type of destructive behavior. Now this is something that would take place uh, after school and it's ran by, again, the, um, the people from St. John's, the trained professionals uh, to take care of um, who they will be the people who would run the program. Um, and also, students who participate in it, their parents will have to sign them up for it. And um, it lasts for approximately two weeks. And um, just overall, we're just making sure that students have opportunities to learn those important refusal skills. We know that they are going to come in contact with a lot of different challenges, and they need to have the skills to help them to know how to deal with them. And that's how we will be um, supporting that effort. We actually have a representative who will be coming in to speak with us uh, during the uh, community Healthy Living Committee meeting, which will take place on December 11th, and a representative will be here to speak. So if anyone would like to attend, a representative will be at the high school. That's where the meeting is held. If you have any questions regarding the program, it would be a great opportunity to um, present those questions. At this point, we are going to turn the mic over to... ELA. Excuse me, Mr. President, Mr. Yes. Chuck, for what time is that meeting at the high school? The meeting is at 3.30, okay. and the speaker is scheduled to be, a representative is scheduled, scheduled to be there at 4 o'clock. Okay, and where's it going to be held at the high school? Uh, I, it may either be held in Ms. Brinston's room, she's the, um, oh. the um, committee chair, or it may be in the media center. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make this very short. Go ahead, Rhonda. Thank you. It's <coughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, English language arts. Uh, we have four teachers in the English language arts department, and we're in the process of selecting a chair for that department. But this is the information. You also have it in your packet. Go ahead, Rhonda. Thank you. Um, each one has their expectations for homework. They have a program for diagramming, which assists students in, um, in writing, but also understanding um, how to write. And not only how to write, but um, it gives them a good idea of the parts of speech and, and how they are used. They also have a syllabus project and uh, this is for the advanced class and also Ms. Dixon's eighth grade class. They also have uh, projects 
Ms. Dixon does a wonderful job of giving a syllabus at the beginning of the year, which is also on, on the website, and listing every um, assignment that has to be done, and uh, so that parents can see them and kids can be reminded of it. You can go to the next one, please. These are her uh, expectations for the seventh grade um, ELA program. Uh, the ELA program for um, seventh grade has really worked very hard on writing this year. Uh, last year we developed um, portfolios for students and uh, that would carry them right through until their ninth grade year and uh, they are working quite well. Not only are they good for the teacher, but they're also good for the student to see their progress and how well they're writing. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Um, one of the things that both the uh, seventh and eighth grade uh, classes do is they try to bring the real world into the classroom. And a couple of the trips that they've taken um, when they do the diary of Anne Frank is to uh, go to the Holocaust Memorial Center and they also um, went to a play at the Wayne State University um, about the, the uh, Anne Frank, the diary of a, a student who, or a child who went through the Holocaust. We also participate, all four uh, teachers participate in the Red Ribbon Writing Contest and as a matter of fact we have 22 winners that we will be taking to lunch on uh, this Thursday. Go ahead. You can go to the next one. I will be presenting the math department, Mrs. Beta. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to um, our math department, and I call them the A-Team, not just because they're hardworking, but because in a very, very short time, our math department at the middle school did receive a grade of A from education, uh, yes. And that grade came from the, the new testing and our new rigorous expectations. Um, this year, teaching math, we... Oh, sorry. <laughs> This year, uh, we have Ms. Marsha Barker, who was one of our special ed math teachers, myself, Ms. Kathleen Forrest, who was an eighth grade teacher, as well as our algebra teacher, uh, Ms. Alana Snar, who is uh, another one of our um, special ed teachers, Ms. Stephanie Waggle, who was new to our department, as well as Ms. Emily Wink, who is also new to our department this year. Okay, first of all, we have a very well-defined, cohesive curriculum. Yes, it's rigorous, and it does offer many, many challenges for both students and teachers. It offers the challenges to students because they have never experienced mathematics at the level that they now are expected to learn. And it offers, and it, it's very um, uh, rigorous for students, and um, it's the teachers themselves find it challenging because we have to develop good lessons that will help our students learn this mathematics. I have to give kudos to the state because they have laid out a very sequential curriculum with each topic carefully leading into the same topic at the next grade level. The students have noticed. Students will tell us, you know, we did some of this last year, but we just didn't do that last step. And that's a good thing because we've got to make this math relevant and they need to understand why they're learning the mathematics that they are. Um, these are the, the different strands that we teach at the middle school in 7th and 8th seventh and eighth grade. We have numbers and operations. We have algebra, measurement, geometry, data and probability. And inside your folders in the mathematics brochures, there will be individual topics under each of these strands. There's many, many topics. Um, but our main focus in 7th and 8th grade is definitely algebra. Many of those algebra topics have come down from the 9th and 10th grade level. And again, it's challenging, but it's very doable. And we're seeing a lot of success with our students. It takes a lot of hard work on the teacher's part and the student's part, but we are seeing those successes. 
Uh, one of our biggest challenges has been trying to get the word out to the parents how important the mathematics is now. As you all probably know, um, students are going to have to pass four years of math at the high school level, including Algebra II. Um, and every chance, every opportunity we get, we let parents know what the state's expectations are. And parents are really starting to come through for us. We're seeing more from them. We're hearing more from them. And we really believe that our students are rising to the challenge as well. Um, we're not letting parents and students hang out to dry with this rig rigorous um, curriculum. Uh, we've been putting some things in place that we believe will help our students. First of all, our co-teaching. Uh, the state has now said that special ed students, or many of our special ed students, have, has, they have got to pass our math meet. And so um, several of us went to a co-teaching in-service last year, and we're implementing that um, over at the middle school. We have one seventh grade co-teaching class and one eighth grade co-teaching class. What that is is we have a special ed math teacher that is partnered with a regular ed math teacher. And it's not, it's not like the years past inclusion model. This has a different philosophy. The regular ed teacher and the special ed teacher are true co-teachers. Special ed teachers, they offer a lot of different strategies. Um, and the regular ed teacher pretty much does the, the teaching of the curriculum. Um, sometimes we hit brick walls. We're just learning how to do this. Uh, but sometimes it's not such a bad idea to hit brick walls because it really makes you understand why you're doing this. And when you look in the, face of the faces of some of these special ed students, you see why you're doing it. Um, you know, we've got them in our hands right now, and um, their future depends on being able to pass these mathematic classes. And, you know, we're seeing some light bulbs going on. You know, we're, we're not there yet, but we're definitely getting there. We also this year have, uh, are offering a math electives class. It's called Exploring Algebra, and it's for eighth graders. We're only offering two sections right now, and we have a total of 30 spots available. We've got a waiting list. Uh, parents really like this elective class. Uh, students take this class instead of one of their regular electives. Um, and we have students who are doing really well. Parents don't want their child out of the class. It definitely is helping them in their regular math class. So we really would like to implement more of these support classes for next year. Um, don't know if that's possible, but they, it definitely is helping many of our math students. Uh, technology. Uh, we have graphing calculators that um, our math teachers went to an in-service a couple years ago and we were given a classroom set of 40 graphing calculators. These calculators were like $105 a piece. So um, we were given those and our eighth grade students get an opportunity to work with graphing calculators so when they get over to the high school they're very familiar with them. We also use Play-Doh and Study Island and we recently went to some training with Carnegie Learning, another technology support um, program. We use manipulatives. We have an excellence in math program. I don't know if any of you have ever attended that. At the end of the first semester, students who um, received an A in the first card marking and the second card marking are invited to our excellence in math program in the Media Center. We make a real big deal of all their, their special efforts to maintain an A for the first semester. We have Fraction Friday. I don't know how many of you have heard of that. Um, our students can do fractions. A few years ago, the high school math teacher said to us, you know what, this, you're, you're going to have to excuse my voice. I'm getting laryngitis, but um, the high school teacher said to us, you know what, the students are coming over. They can't do fractions. So, you know, we knew we needed to do something with, uh, with that because fractions are so important with algebra. So we implemented Fraction Friday, and every Friday we work on fractions for a few minutes. Um, by the end of eighth grade, the majority of our students have mastered them. Um, we've even uh, met with the sixth grade teachers. We had some time last year to collaborate with them, and some of our sixth grade teachers are now implementing Fraction Friday as well. Last year, we started in, uh, implementing Wintagers, and that means integers on Wednesday, or win with integers. Integers are the positive and negative numbers that we use so much in algebra. 
And um, on Wednesdays, we work with integers just for a few minutes, so students will remember how to use those. And then uh, four out of five of our math teachers are currently doing some tutoring with some of our students as well. So we feel that we've, we really have some good support programs in place to help our students become more successful. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, I'm going to turn the mic over to Mr. Madsen, Science Department. Thank you, Ms. Beta. Um, like Ms. Beta said, I'm Mike Madsen. I'm the Science Department Chair at the Middle School. Um, the Science Department is going to be going through some changes and has been going through some changes for the last couple years. Currently, the seventh grade is the same as it's always been, which is uh, physical science, which is sound and light, magnetism and electricity, chemical building blocks, with the addition of weather and climate. Um, that came in last year due to a change in the state curriculum. Um, the teachers of seventh grade are Tom Patterson and Wesley Faulkner. Wesley just came to us from Rommel and uh, seems to be excited about his job, which is great. Uh, in the eighth grade, we teach purely an earth science curriculum, which includes astronomy, solid earth, which is earth and earth processes, fluid earth, water, and atmosphere. And science process skills is a, a concentration that's worked throughout this, uh, the year. The eighth grade curriculum now is based on the high school of Glicks, which came out last year. Um, everything that we teach now in the eighth grade will be on the Michigan Merit Exam. They're given the 11th grade. Um, while they're not given high school credit, all the content is high school level content. Teachers in the eighth grade are, of course, myself and Ms. Sharon Grandell. Um, one thing that we concentrated on in the science department for the last couple of years and have been still doing it to this day is what we call common practices. Um, we realized that for so long, four different teachers were giving four different pre-tests, four different post-tests, four different midterms. So we all got together and uh, by grade level, seventh grade teachers are giving all the same tests at pre and post and the midterm level and, as well as the eighth graders. Um, as a department, we decided that we should make a common category of grading so that everybody's grading scale is relatively the same as far as what gets a certain percentage. Tests and quizzes are 25 percent, homework is 30 percent. Participation is 15% and labs are 30% and that's across the board through the whole department. Likewise, our grading scale was made standard. That way, when a student leaves my class to go to Ms. Grandel's class, their grade will carry over or it roughly should be the same. As well, we've also tried to make as common as possible what we're teaching at the same time because we do have students who at the semester, for example, will move and it's important for them to not be behind. They should be at the same spot so they're not learning things that they already learned or so far behind that they have to play catch up. Um, and again, the department-wide grading categories allow us all to say, this is worth this percent of your grade no matter what science class you're in. Well, since the slide's not moving, um, oh, here we go. Um, some of the things that we're engaged in this year specifically are updating of the seventh grade curriculum, which are, uh, is going to be put under new content expectations. K through seven content expectations are at the Board of Education right now for the state of Michigan, and in January they'll be approved. And what that does is uh, requires now that K through seven have content expectations. Each grade level will have a level that it's supposed to <coughs> teach at. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, it's very important too that with the new content expectations, we have all been trying to get together with ideas on how we can help the elementary schools um, and get some communication flowing up from kindergarten up to seventh grade and into the eighth grade. Uh, we are also continuing our Glick imp implementation for the eighth grade. Because earth science is a new concept to a lot of students, we've had to cover a lot of things that are called prerequisites. But as the new curriculum comes into the elementary school, our prerequisites will go down to lower levels so we can concentrate on what are truly um, expectations for high school level earth science. Um, currently in the seventh grade, both seventh grade teachers are committed to tutoring uh, to aim for mastery on concepts that are MEEP related because we get our MEEP in October. And when they come from seventh grade, we want to make sure that they know a lot of the material so our review time can be more focused and directed toward MEEP success. Um, 
The next thing is the return of the revamped and relevant science fair. We analyzed our science fair, which we've been doing for years, and realized it has no relevance at this point. It's not real world. It's not um, functioning as anything more than just having the kids jump through hoops. So what we've decided is we've um, worked on coming up with some new concepts in our science fair, which are things like allowing students to do more than just a standard experiment, such as an invention or collections. Uh, research projects which are related to say a career in science or some topic in science they show an interest in that can't be replicated in a standard experiment. We want to make it more academic and relevant to real world content. Um, and the last thing is what's called the department wide trivia challenge for review and exposure to MEEP and other content information. This year we have decided that um, we're going to have a little department wide contest where we expose the students in a Jeopardy format to content that they either need to review for the MEEP or have not seen yet so they can get some exposure. And uh, by the time it's done, one grade level, one teacher will have what is called the Department Trivia Championship. But every other member of the department will get awards and it's a great way to expose the kids, get them out of the classroom in a different way. We have technology to create these great Jeopardy boards and uh, smart boards that we can use right in the media center and in room 100. So it's very important that we use that and use it to our advantage. And at this time, I'm going to turn things over to Mary Beth Coffey, who is filling in for Mr. McCabe for social studies. Thank you. Good evening. Um, again, my name is Mary Beth Coffey. Um, I am one of the five members of the social studies department at the middle school. Um, Mr. McCabe, as Mr. Madsen said, is our chair. He hopefully coached our Bulldogs to victory this evening in a basketball um, game. That's why he's not here. Um, seventh grade teachers are Miss um, Akua Salisbury and Carrie Turco, I think I believe, same her name right. <laughs> um, and then in eighth grade, Mr. McCabe, myself, and the very valiant Mr. Keith Brothers, who when he's not teaching social studies is actually our PE teacher. Um, so he's had um, quite a year so far. Um, what I'd like to draw your attention to at this time is um, the seventh and eighth grade curriculum as it's being taught this year. Um, just Similarly, as science has recently gone through, um, the new social this new state social studies standards um, have just been accepted or adapted adopted by the state um, in the last month and a half or so. Um, so we've just been getting the final versions of the GLICs being handed down to ourselves, um, and there are some pretty big differences between what we're currently teaching and what we're going to be need to, we're going to need to be teaching um, come 0809. Um, currently, the seventh grade curriculum is North Africa, the Middle East, Russia, and Africa south of the Sahara Desert. Um, and then the next slide shows eighth grade curriculum. Um, at the currently, we, di we discuss the events leading to the Revolutionary War, the Revolutionary War, the Constitution, westward expansion, the Civil War, and Reconstruction. Um, as I mentioned, there are some differences between what we currently teach now and what we will be expected to teach in 0809, um, and part of what um, my job here tonight is to simply say that um, we'll need time as a department to get together and redevelop our pre-tests, our midterms, our post-tests, um, and then also to work on our lessons to reflect the new state standards. Um, some of the special events that uh, take place in the social studies department, there's the social studies Olympiad, and there is also the um, infamous, apparently, trip to Washington, D.C. and Gettysburg. Um, these are both opportunities for students to get to know social studies in a different way, rather than learning dates, names, places, that kind of thing. Um, this engages the students a little bit more into a minds-on, hands-on um, absorption, really, of um, events and time. And then my final slide is, is simply um, some of the priorities that I mentioned. Because of the changes that we will need to go through in the next year or so, um, the Social <coughs> Studies Department is hoping, fingers crossed, for um, some new textbooks to cover the new GLICs that we'll be expected to be teaching, as well as time this year to um, reassess our assessments, if that makes sense, <laughs> um, our lessons, and also discuss with the sixth grade teachers as there will be some, there will have to be some conversation between the sixth grade and seventh grade teachers as to which grade will be picking up um, various regions as part of their geography units. 
Um, and that's it. Thank you for your time. Um, I will be, our next will be um, Mr. Bannis. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gary Bannis from the middle school, and um, I co-chair with Betty Santo. Betty is actually at a SEMCA grant presentation today, so she's presenting at one end of town, and I'm here at the others. Um, the electives department, we uh, are in probably one of the largest departments there at the, at the middle school. We do have nine staff members, and just real quick, we'll try to run through our, our slides here, and we're a very hands-on department. Our subject or our classes give the kids a lot of opportunities to um, sort of just experience a wide variety of activities, and we try real hard to tie things into the math classes, the language arts classes, so there's um, uh, some relevance to what they're doing, and they can see some connections between learning those math skills and learning their Fraction Fridays and getting into uh, uh, my class, for example, or Mr. Knox's uh, woodshop class, and then actually putting those fractions into work as they measure. Uh, the seventh grade rotation is a brand new class this year, and uh, we put together life management, a co-ed PE class, multimedia, and a technology class for the seventh graders. We have two hours of that, and um, we're rotating the, the students through on a 10-week rotation, sort of giving them a chance to experience the, the life management activities in each one of those up there, and um, hopefully letting them find their forte, what they enjoy the most, and then for eighth grade, for electives, they can concentrate on on one of those subjects for a longer period. Of course, part of our department is the infamous band uh, program, and we have an extremely uh, large, extremely uh, proud band at our middle school, and um, Mr. Fernandez is constantly at uh, competitions, and we, we always do very good. We have beginning band, symphonic band, and concert band. Foreign language, uh, Spanish, French, Chinese, and um, new this year, we're trying to get in motion and get in place a year-long uh, foreign language class, and um, we're trying to get all the kinks out of that. Uh, when all is said and done, the students will end up earning uh, one year of foreign language credit for high school. Um, and again, this year, it's a program just getting put into place. Um, we have, um, I believe, five students that, that are in the class, in the program, and it's being uh, run simultaneously with uh, another French class. So hopefully next year we'll get the word out and get, get things in motion, and it will be a, a much larger class. Um, life management, again, uh, Ms. Santo focuses on sewing skills and cooking skills, and again, she tries extremely hard, as all of the electives department does, to incorporate um, all of our school improvement goals, incorporating writing, incorpor incorporating math, and all those things with each one of the classes. Following that slide, okay, technology. Um, my class, uh, 20 weeks for the eighth graders, 10 weeks for the seventh graders, and again, uh, the three of the probably the most uh, popular programs there, the Car Builder, Bridge Builder, and the CAD program, um, again, real life, real life based. Uh, car builder, for example, the students are actually putting, to, putting together all the components of a car, right from the chassis, the wheels, engine, the whole nine yards, uh, putting it through a test, and again, it prints up results for us. In real life, they have to compare those results. Uh, the energy czar might come through and say they have to have a 10% improvement in their gas uh, mileage rate uh, figures for their, their fleet of cars. So again, it puts the kids back to work with a new assignment. Um, adolescent life, again, an opportunity for kids to experience those topics related to growing up, uh, peer relationships, um, controlling situations, and controlling some of their emotions. Uh, we have one section of art going this year. So it's been a number of years since we have had art at the middle school. Again, another way for, for students to express themselves and. Um, let that creative talent out. Multimedia, we get to share between the high school with um, Mr. Wine for multimedia. He's at our building for half the day, at the high school for half the day. And again, uh, he focuses on digital photography for the most part. And um, kids have an enjoyable time learning how to take pictures and cropping and editing, making movies and things like that. Industrial arts, um, woodshop in general terms, 
But again, Mr. Knox is making a transition over to a, a more technology-based program and um, is incorporating or trying to incorporate ways where the kids are doing different exercises, different experiments, and then um, hopefully in the long run be creating some spreadsheets to track the results. We also have keyboarding, which is a new class for the seventh graders this year. And um, of course, basic computers where the kids are uh, learning all about Microsoft Word, Excel, um, the whole gamut. We try to incorporate all of the technology um, glicks that we can between the keyboarding, the basic computers, and also my class. And last but not least, I think the last slide, um, again, the electives department is trying extremely hard to support all the NCA and school improvement goals in all of the classes. We stress writing activities, we, we stress math activities, and um, uh, all of our classes lend themselves really good to problem solving. And again, the more problem solving that we do, the more real life based those classes are. So again, we're trying very hard to work with all the other departments um, and try to work on our school improvement goals and keep um, keep things positive as far as AYP goes. With that, it's time for Special Ed and Ms. Watkins. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Takiya Watkins, uh, teacher consultant and chairperson for Special Ed. And so really briefly, we're just going to go over some of the things that we do in the Special Ed department at the middle school. As we're getting to the slides, um, if you'll refer to your pamphlet, there are some important dates and services that we provide in there. Um, and you can read it at your leisure. So goals and objectives for the special ed department, we aim to provide an individualized education in the least restrictive environment for all students with disabilities. Um, this is done with various resources. We use educational strategies, uh, modifications, accommodations, collaboration with the general ed teachers, as well as parental and community involvement. And we also have an after school tutoring program. Some of the services that are available for students in the special education department include resource room, categorical services, um, teacher consultant. We have occupational therapy as well as PT therapy, physical therapy. We have consultants come in with students who have physical disabilities. Um, a hearing consultant for those that are hearing impaired, social work services. Uh, we have a school psychologist uh, that tests and is also available for the students, a speech and language teacher. Uh, we have after school tutoring once again. We also utilize the co teaching program as well as case managers. Each student is given a case manager to help them with their educational success. For enrichment, we have Reality Store, and this is simply an annual transition program for eighth grade students, um, all eighth grade students. And it's a simulation of adult life and responsibility. So they actually um, go through and live as an adult for a day, or for an hour, because they come down for one hour <laughs> during the day. Um, and they pay <laughs> bills, and uh, they pay car notes, and they get daycare, and all that great stuff. We also run the Bulldog Pride Store. It's an elective class that teaches employability skills. So a student may run the cash register, a student may bake cookies, a student may stock the shelves um, and sell merchandise as well. And again, our after school tutoring program addresses individualized needs of students. Um, they can come in on Mondays and Tuesdays and get help in any subject area in which they need it. Our future goals for the department are quite simply to uh, continue our implementation and compliance with the Individual Disabilities Education Act IDEA, uh, continue to align our curriculum with the extended as well as the grade level, um, grade level content expectations, and our major goal is for our students to become more independent and able learners. Um, just so that you know, Reality Store will be going on April 16th at the middle school, and we are looking for parent and community volunteers, and the hours are from 7.30 to 3 o'clock. Ms. Henry. And to wrap it up, uh, as you can see, the middle school is focused on student achievements and um, a structured curriculum, but we also have programs that support student achievement, 
And um, some of those are we're continually emphasizing the Romulus way and providing a positive, safe, predictable environment for students. Um, we offer beha positive behavior incentives <coughs> for students. The last was Oktoberfest, where students who didn't have any behavior referrals in October were able to um, enjoy an after school activity. And uh, we have one coming up this winter. We've also started through our climate committee a uh, advisory committee, which is made up of student leaders, and they get to have some um, say in decisions that are made throughout the building. Um, and last uh, but not least, we have our Gear Up program through the University of Michigan that offers support services to parents. And we have support uh, parent workshops every month. And some of the topics, it's the first, month, first Thursday of every month, um, typically 6 to 7.30 in the Media Center. And those workshops, um, 6.30 to 7.30. Sorry, in the media center. And uh, those topics have included survival tips for parents of middle school students, organizing middle school students, and um, also this up, the next uh, parent workshop is Thursday, December 6th at 6.30 in the media center. And the, the topic will be a parent's toolbox for talking about teen sexuality, which I have a flyer for you um, tonight. Uh, the Gear Up Parent Council also meets monthly, and that's out of the, um, the grant as well. So we would like to thank you for your time tonight, allowing us to come and um, share our programs at the middle school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Very good. The uh, next item on our regular agenda is uh, personnel actions. Mr. Clark. Mr. Minkiewicz, uh we have no personnel actions for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Next item would be bills for payment. Uh, Sherry Papazoglu will uh, give us uh, number one, bills for payment, and then she's going to do a presentation on uh, revision of the 0708 budget and revision on energy guidelines. Thank sure. you, Mr. President. I'm recommending the board approve the bill submitted for payment for the period November 14th through November 21st, 2007, in the amount of $731,290.27. Mr. President, I would like to make a motion that we approve the bills for payment from November 14th to November 21st for $731,290.27. Support. Is that better? Yeah. Thank you. We have a motion by Mrs. Freyer, support by Mrs. Lanasi to accept the bills for payment. Uh, before we vote, does anyone have any questions concerning the bills? Seeing none, we will have a vote. All those in favor of paying the bill, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Do you want to hit the lights? <laughs> or can you see? Thank you. Um, I'm here tonight to provide the board an update on the 2007-2008 budget. Um, I would love to stand in the middle here, but I can't do both. So if you don't mind, I'll stand here at the computer so that I can flip through the slides. <laughs> You're standing in the middle now. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm Sherry Papazoglu, the Director of Finance and Operations here at Romulus Schools, and I'm here tonight to recommend that the Board ad adopt a revised 2007-2008 uh, budget. Um, for your information, the Finance Committee did meet last Monday, and um, they'll be recommending the approval tonight for you. The reason for the update, uh, for the most part, is this will provide you updated information based on our FTEs and any of the expenditure changes that we've seen. We've brought some back some staff. Um, all of our st staff are at the buildings that they're going to be teaching in for the rest of the year. So it'll provide you a better picture of really what's going on in the district. First, the first slide provides you a picture of what the approved revenue was when we uh, uh, adopted the budget back in June, about 42800000 $42, And right now, the revised projected revenue to end the school year, 0708, is $42,440,000. Uh, $42, that's a decrease of 300 and almost 365,000, um, but you'll see as we go through the slides, um, this decrease in revenue also shows a decrease in expenditures. It's kind of a wash. The next slide just showed you, shows you a pie chart on what you approved last June, and basically it just shows you that about 91% of, of our revenue comes from state and local sources. So about 52% comes from state aid, and about 39% comes from local taxes shows you how dependent we are on our state aid and um, taxing authority. The next slide shows you the revision to that. Um, and if you, again, look at the state and the local percentages, they add up to 90%. So there really hasn't been much change. Um, just to discuss a, for a few seconds here the um, changes in the actual revenue, the $365,000 decrease. just wanted to note that the increase in the taxable value for the city of Romulus is about 7.09%. So our taxable base here that the millages are based on is increased 7.9%, 7.09%. There's also a stated adjustment. So I want you to remember that every time there's an increase in taxable value, there's a decrease in state aid. But in that, they total the same um, number. So as one increases, the other will always decrease. And as one increases, the other will decrease. Um, one of the reasons for the update is that we had a, um, I don't want to say a 50 student increase, that's kind of misleading. What, it, what I mean by that is that we budgeted a 50 student decline when we approved the budget in June. And luckily, fortunately for the district, we did not experience that. So the revenue numbers do reflect an increase in that number. Um, once again, the explanation of the taxable value increase um, offset to state aid. MSRP, MSRP, which is a preschool program, has not been approved at the state. It's caught up and wrapped up into this um, state budget crisis. We know that we're going to get 118,000, but we believe after the state's all done making cuts that we'll be at about 210,000. So I didn't want to commit to something that we didn't have. And then, um, let me take a drink of water. I have a cold. Okay. And then just to note, special ed cost decreased in 0607. So the 0708 state aid, the, the special ed portion that we receive, is always reflective of the previous year's expenditures. And as you know, with the budget cuts, our special education costs have been decreasing. We've eliminated social workers, speech pathologists, things of that nature. The other item to mention is that tuition between school districts eliminated. Specifically, this is Wayne Westland. Now that we have a partnership with Belleville Van Buren, we no longer send students to Wayne Westland. And then finally, I wanted to note that we've all heard this $48 increase um, per student for FTE. That increase would amount to about $195,000. That number has not been included in your revenue because at this point, I'm not comfortable enough that the state's stand, gonna stand firmly behind that increase. So as we move through the year, the rest of the year, if I get better information, I will be including that in the revenue. Now we're gonna look at the other side of the equation um, you can see here the approved expenditures were about $42,800,000. The revised expenditures were $42,200,000, which is a decrease of about $434,000. This slide also reflects um, you know, the share of the expenditures. It just shows you that between instruction and support, it's about 99% of our budget. The next slide shows you the revision. 
it's 99%. So we haven't changed how we are allocating our expense, expenses. It uh, just shows you that we're being consistent um, as, as we revise the budget. And just a couple things to note about the um, revision to the expenditure side is that I've reanalyzed operation expenditures, specifically utilities and repairs. Now that we've been with energy education for a year, it gives me a year of data to work with. We've seen the results. We're about 500000 in savings. I've now reflected that into the budget. Um, the adjusted subteacher costs. Um, the district last year experienced about $200,000 less of substitute teacher uh, expenditures. And so I reflected that number in this year. I don't expect our substitute teacher costs to um, be as much as they have been in the past. Um, one of the other items is our state aid borrowing. Although we did have to borrow $2 million, um, it's less than we've ever had to borrow before. So that's, that's another uh, point to point out. And then there's just other miscellaneous adjustments, moving teachers here, moving teachers there. We have the PCMI, the contracting of the substitute teachers, things of that nature. Now, the most important part of the equation is fund balance. Um, at the, at the uh, June approval meeting, I, we projected a $1.8 million ending fund balance for 0708. The revised ending fund balance for 0708 is $3.7 million. That's an increase of $1.9 million, and here's the reason why. We ended the year of 607, $1.7 million better than expected. It was truly a matter of good um, housekeeping within the district and the staff really watching how they spent money. So, um, you know, thank you to the staff for participating, taking ownership in this. And then the 0708 fiscal year surplus, which means that the revenue versus expenditures for this year will be about 170000 more in revenue than in, in expenditures. Okay, the bottom line is that we're going to begin the, the year with $3.6 million. We're going to have revenue of about $42,400,000, expenditures of $42,200,000, which leaves the district with the $3.7 million. What I recommended to the superintendent and I'm recommending to you tonight is to reserve some of those funds for future needs, important needs, technology. We, are have, an up, uh, we have an aging computer um, equipment that we are going to have to replace in the next one to five years. The object is to start saving money so that when this happens, we have funds to do that. Building and site, we all know that our roofs are getting older. Um, we want to reserve about $800,000 for that so we don't find ourselves in a problem having to go out and get loans to borrow money and to pay for these emergency needs. Curriculum and textbooks, $300,000. I know that right now the expectation is to do um, the math curriculum for, for this year. And you just heard that the social studies department, I believe, needs new textbooks. This will take care of that. And then the last is we do have some contractual obligations we need to meet, we, um, which accounts for about 539000 It's just letting you know we have to put those in reserve to make sure that they're paid for next year. So that tells you all of the reserved amounts that I'm recommending, what's unreserved and available for expending or keeping in the fund balance is $1.8 million. The next slide just um, explains to you the importance of having a fund balance in reserves. The district's unreserved fund balance is about 4.3% right now. MSBO recommends 5 to 15%, so we're almost there. Reserves allow the district to guarantee funds for specific programs. We talked about technology, curriculum, capital outlay, and building and site updates. It allows for emergency expenditures. If we do have something that goes out of boiler at the high school that's going to cost a million dollars, we are at least going to have some money in our reserve to, and fund balance to take care of that. In cash flow, <coughs> one of the reasons we have to borrow every year from the state, uh, state aid note program, is because we don't have the cash flow for the summer months. This will allow us to have something in our bank account to do so. And it's just good fiscal management. And then one other thing that's not on, on there that came up at the Finance Committee, which is really important, is if the state does decide to shut down <laughs> for a month or two, we have reserves to make sure that our staff are paid. And then some things to just note um, going forward, that's my job, um, to inform you in the future. 
that you know, state aid could be reduced at any time. We've all seen it. We've been there and done that for the last probably five years. It's just history. Um, I will constantly review taxable values and collections because as you saw, they're 90% of what revenue we got in. And then just a continuous review of some of the bigger items, utility costs, substitute teachers, not as big but important, copier costs, and then building site-based budgets, which are the allocations each building receives to buy supplies, copy machine supplies, things of that nature. And just one other thing I want to note is that Volk Ed State Aid, there might be a possibility that we might have to return about $41,000 to the state. We did not spend all of our Volk Ed money. They require you to spend 90% on professional development. We did not do that last year. We don't know what's going to happen, but we're trying to remedy the situation this year. And working with Mr. Hoffman going forward, that won't happen again. We will spend all the funds the state gives us. And lastly, um, I want to thank the Board of Education. Over the last two years, you faced a couple, a lot of difficult decisions in cutting costs. Um, you're the reason why we're in this financial stability position that we are in right now. And secondly, again, to, to um, give kudos to the staff because I think they all took ownership and um, you can see that in the numbers. So, thank you. Thank you, thank Sherry. You, Sherry. Thank, you. thank you, Sherry. You did a good job. Sorry, I was Just no, we got to make a motion. Yes. Uh, we now have a motion in order uh, for the Finance Committee's recommendation. So the Finance Committee made the motion to? No, we need a motion so from the board. So you still need a motion? To, okay. Yes. I'll make a motion that we um, accept the revision of the 2007-2008 budget. Support. I have a motion by Mrs. Freyer, support by Mr. Kuderick, to uh, accept the Finance Committee's recommendation to adopt the revised 2007-2008 budget. Uh, before we vote, does anyone have any questions or comments? I have Mrs. A comment. Buckley? Um, I just want to um, kind of piggyback on what Sherry said. We had to make some hard decisions and they were tough, but it shows that our staff jumped in and they believed that we needed to do this and it shows in the numbers. So we really appreciate everything the staff has done to make sure we have a sound budget. But we have to make sure going forward, we have to keep, keep looking and digging and just trying to cut costs where we can. So thank you to the staff. We Very really good. appreciate it. Very good, mm -hmm. Mrs. Buckley. Any other comments? Okay, the vote is in order. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We accept the revised budget. Now we go right back to uh, <laughs> the la presentation. The last item on the agenda that um, I will be presenting tonight involves the revision of the energy guidelines. Um, I'm asking that the board accept the, uh, they're really not changes, they're updates, um, additions, I should say, to the guidelines, the energy guidelines, which are a pure reflection of our energy education contract for utilities, heating, and cooling. And what I did to make it simple, um, if you look in the packet that you got, the, in, the items that are circled are the additional items. So if you want to take a moment to look at those and then move on with your um, approval of the resolution. So, Mr. Mankiewicz, we need a motion to approve this. Yes. And the additional items were the circled items, Correct. right? Correct. Okay. That's the five. ones that they're pushing we all had a chance, uh, I think, to go through to those. Adjust. So I would like to um, make a motion, Mr. President, that we accept the Finance Committee's recommendation to approve the revised energy guidelines. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Mm -hmm. Freyer, support by Mrs. Buckley, to accept the Finance Committee's recommendation to approve the revised energy guidelines. Any questions? Seeing none, we will take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. Um, the next item on the agenda would be communications and expressions from the public. I received nothing, so uh, we'll go to item I, which is items of interest from the superintendent, and that will be handled by Mr. Clark. In uh, your board packages, Superintendent Wise has uh, placed information on information in your packages for you to uh, review. 
uh, those items are pretty uh, straightforward and um, I think kind of speaks for themselves. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, next item, questions and or concerns of board members. Do we have any board members with questions or concerns? I have a comment. Mrs. Buckley? Um, I just wanted to comment on our band. I went to Bandorama last week and I see why our uh, bands win so many awards. They are truly just fantastic. So it was uh, kudos to the band. It was just wonderful. So just wanted to mention that. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. President. Oh, Mr. Kudrick? Got a couple things. One to go along with Ms. Buckley. It's really nice to see that all the bands from the elementary all the way up to the high school, how they achieve and progress through the, through the process and everything. And uh, it was a great performance by all the schools and all the students. And it was really nice to see the marching band come out and top off the whole thing. It was mm -hmm. really good. Uh, another thing, I'd um, like to compliment uh, Mr. Lake's class over at Barth. Uh, their, the Barth Cookie Club put on a Thanksgiving dinner last Wednesday. Great food, and the students were very uh, energetic and very polite. They all had certain jobs. They spoke about that, and uh, it was very nice. Mrs. Frayer? Uh, Mr. President, I would just like to mention that I was able to um, go over and see the multi-age classroom um, last week. And I was pretty impressed with what I was seeing there. The students, you could tell, were definitely in a learning environment. And um, they had a lot of hands-on technology going on in that classroom, which was pretty impressive. Um, so I just wanted to say that I think that we're doing some good things over there. I was pretty impressed with that. And also, you know, Carl's not here to hear this, but um, I'll give him a call and let him know. I, I was impressed with the presentation tonight from the middle school. Um, I know that I had asked in one of our study sessions that we have more of that in the future because, you know, it's it's nice to hear what they need from us um, as far as being able to teach in the classrooms and as far as getting the students to learn. And I was pretty impressed with the fact that, you know, they, they speak up and tell us exactly what they need, exactly what they're going to need in order to teach for the following year, which I think is critical. So I, I was really impressed with the presentation. Um, a lot of things have changed over there in the past year. We have a lot of new faces over there and a lot of um, new electives, as you heard, that they're offering to the students. And, you know, some of the parents who don't get to go to conferences and who don't get to go into the schools every day like we all do um, need to see that. So I was, again, for the fifth time tonight, pretty impressed with the presentation. I. I would like that sort of presentation from everyone who comes to see us, you know, not just to tell us, you know, how things are going, but in what they need from us as well. So that's pretty much what I have. Uh, I just have one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, our neighboring district, New Boston, Huron, uh, just lost one of their athletes, uh, he was injured in a football game and eventually got some type of an infection and uh, has since passed away. Uh, I'm mentioning it because his grandparents uh, have lived in Romulus for years. Uh, they still live in Romulus. And our uh, condolences go out to the family. Uh, the grandparents that live in Romulus are Art and Barb Greca and uh, just like to send our uh, condolences to them and to the entire uh, here in high school for the loss of their athlete. Uh, anyone else? Then the next item would be a motion for adjournment. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion we adjourn. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Kuderick and support by Mrs. Freyer to adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. This meeting is officially adjourned.